can't get rid of the clouds, but maybe I can collect more photons if I clean this glass. Ah, it doesn't really look dirty, but <clears throat> I've got the world's best glass cleaner that's excellent for use on windows, mirrors, windshields, and other glass surfaces. That's a glass surface, and this rag looks fine. I think it's uh, wax on, wax off, if I'm not mistaken. Let's try it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was such a terrible dream. Don't ever do that. Nah. All kidding aside, today on Deep Sky Labs, we're gonna be talking about uh, what parts of your telescope you need to clean. And I'm gonna be using these sacrificial pieces of glass. This one's gonna go in front of the telescope. This one's gonna go in front of the camera. I'm gonna get these all dirty and gross and we're gonna shoot flats and we're gonna, uh, you know, take some images so you can see the effect that really dirty glass does or does not have on your astrophotography images. And hopefully we can come to some conclusions about how often you should be cleaning your equipment. Um, and we'll even talk about some tips on how to actually clean it. Um, one of those is to never use canned air and instead use a, a blower, uh, blowing device, which uh, I like to call my Blowimatron 5000. And this just shoots air um, at whatever it is that you're trying to clean. These are generally better than compressed air. Um, but let's start with uh, this piece of pretty clear glass. And uh, I'm gonna cut to some shots of me making this really dirty so that we can use this in the front of the telescope to show what it's like when that first optical element is filthy. Woof, that hurt my soul to do to these really nice pieces of glass, especially this filter, because I use this uh, UVIR cut filter from SV Boney when I'm doing planetary imaging. So that was a little bit rough, but let's talk to what the plan is here. So to start with, um, our game plan is going to be, we're gonna use this uh, Red Cat 51, um, which is a 250 millimeter focal length and 51 millimeter um, diameter aperture. And the reason that I'm using this is when I ordered this piece of glass here, um, I found that, you know, this was the best price that I could find for what is essentially a clear piece of glass that's, you know, it's, it's actual glass um, that wasn't going to break the bank and it's going to help us accomplish what I think we need to accomplish. So the test setup is going to be like this. We're going to, um, I'm going to remove this dew shield here just to make it easier to see. But we're going to set the telescope up. We're going to point it um, at Polaris and uh, that way we won't get a ton of like rotation or anything like that. We're gonna drop this glass element down in here and it's going to land on top of, um, on top of the first lens objective within this Petzval Apo. Um, and then we're gonna, you know, it'll have the dew shield on it and we're gonna take uh, images. Uh, we're gonna do 15 second, 30 second and one minute. It will be tracked and guided, so it should be fine. Let me put this back on here. And the camera we're gonna use for this is the ZWO 2600 MC Duo. I really love this camera. I use it all the time for all sorts of stuff, including a lot of the experiments on this channel, um, which if you're not already subscribed, get subscribed and uh, throw a like down there. It really helps channels like mine uh, grow and find the right audiences. So for here, we've got the ZWO filter drawer um, attached to the front of the camera. And what you can see when I take this cover off is the drawer itself is actually really close to the, to the sensor itself. And so we'll put this very dirty uh, filter in here and we'll slide that in front and that'll simulate either having a dirty filter or even having sort of a dirty uh, sensor window uh, because it's so close to that sensor. We're gonna do the same thing with this. Um, between each one, we will clean each of the elements and I'll shoot some B-roll using my uh, cleaning kit here that I got off Amazon and I'll have uh, affiliate links in the description below. This is the kit that I've been using since I first started and I think it's almost time for me to reorder another one, but they do last a while. Um, and we'll clean all of these elements and we'll put them back on again and shoot the same set of images because I wanna make sure that any weirdness that we see is not just because there's a piece of glass on top or anything like that. So yeah, let's, uh, it's starting to get dark. I think we're gonna get a really clear night tonight, which is always exciting for me. All right, 
that was a fun evening. Uh, one thing to take into account is I completely forgot to take flats, so we don't have any flats. But what we do have is a series of images that are of each of those states of uh, dirty filter, clean filter, um, dirty glass, clean glass. And it each one of these images that you're gonna see here consists of uh, five 15 second images, five 30 second images, and five 60 second images. And then all of those are stacked together. The reason I did it that way is I wanted to see if there was a meaningful difference between the you know, 15, 30, and one minute um, stacks. There wasn't, so I just took all the data and smashed it all together. So we're gonna start with the really, really wide shot here. Um, and I'm gonna give you a second to take a guess which is which before I put it on the screen. So, all right, top left over here, this is dirty glass in front of the telescope's objective. The top right is clean glass in front of the telescope's objective. Bottom left is dirty filter. Bottom right is clean filter. Now I know, so the dirty filter, clean filter, that one's very apparent which one is which. And I know on the top, the clean glass actually almost looks worse than dirty glass. Um, I went back, I think the stretches were just a little bit different. I think I stretched the clean glass a little bit more. It allowed me to stretch it a little bit more. But really what I want you to take note here is between dirty and clean, essentially there is no difference. And that glass was dirty. There was fingerprints, there was water spots, cause I sprayed it with some water and then let that dry. Um, there's no difference there. Between the clean filter and dirty filter on the bottom, you can really tell what sort, what happens when you put some dirt. And there's so much dirt on there that the rings, the donuts are like the, you know, the spots that show up are all merged together, making super shapes, it's crazy. Now I want to zoom in real quick on one of the brightest stars in the image, because I think this tells another interesting picture. The two dirty ones, you can see the sort of halos around the stars have weird shapes in them, right? So the dirty filter bottom left has these like streaks, like stars coming out of it. This is an aprochromatic refractor. There should be basically nothing there, but a nice fuzzy round star. And you can see that in clean filter bottom right, it looks Perfect, like that's what you expect that star to look like. Top left, you can see there's these interesting little distortions here. This is probably one of the easiest places to see that this there's something weird going on here. Um, and if you compare that to clean glass, which is top right, it has a couple little distortions, but they're fairly even and regular. So the front lens, the objective in the front does have some effect. I'm not saying that it can be super dirty and you're fine, um, but it's really faint and you won't really notice it that much. Where if you have a dirty filter, you notice it and it's bad. Um, let's zoom in here to, this is again, the same spot on all of these. Um, this is uh, just a, a random patch over in the top left of that wider field image. And here again, you can see that um, the glass, the, the top images left and right look very similar. I think again, maybe it's around the halos that you can sort of start seeing some of that little discrepancy between the two. Uh, it's also pretty clear to tell that the top right, which is clean glass, I was able to stretch it more. You can tell the stars are a little bit brighter, a little bit better. Um, but again, the big story is on the filters, uh, bottom left, which is dirty filter versus bottom right. Um, it's, it's pretty, bad. Um, so let's, after this, I want to sort of come to some conclusions and then I think I'll do a sort of bonus video of how to clean the glass. I think it's sort of going to be outside the scope here, but, um, let, let's get to some conclusions. Okay. So what did we learn here in this video? Um, I've got some notes written down because I really wanted to take the time to, um, sort of think about what this is. So first of all, this was fun. I feel like we build a set of preconceived notions when we get into a hobby based on things we read online. And we just assume that those things are accurate. Um, and sometimes they are and sometimes they're not. Um, two, this was pretty stressful. It was not fun to take uh, this dirty piece of glass. Where's my, here, this guy. 
uh, and like put it anywhere near a telescope, right? Because those things are, you, they're meant to be kept very clean. It was also really sketchy to put all that dirt on the filter. Uh, it was a little bit stressful. And then trying to manage every single run to make sure I was doing the right things and make sure the clouds didn't come in. It was a little stressful, but that's fine. Um, one of the things I did learn, and I'm trying to be self-reflective here, is I need to tighten up my workflows when it comes to experiments like this. I need to do things like automate the stretches so that we don't see those discrepancies. So I need to look into uh, Nina a little bit more on how I can automate the stretches and apply the exact same stretch across all things. I think if I was to switch to PixInsight, uh, that seems like a thing that's really easy in there is to apply the exact same stretches and filters to from one image to another. So maybe this is the push I need to make that change. Um, and I need to get better about uh, keeping tabs on exactly what it is that I'm trying to run every experiment night. Because between running my big imaging rig, which actually just fired up, I could just see my uh, Edge HD 11 pointing, uh, trying to finish a capture on the Dumbbell Nebula in the SHO. Between that and just running the experiments, I don't get so many clear nights, I feel like rushed. So I think I need to do a better job of like writing down, here's exactly what I need to do. So hopefully I'll get better at doing these things if you guys will keep watching. Um, the front lens element, right? It's not that critical to image quality. It is still important. Um, this front part of a telescope, um, it's the biggest piece of glass in the telescope. And so small amounts of dust and debris on there aren't that important. The filter and the sensor are smaller pieces of glass. They take up more of the sort of field of view. Um, they are really critical. Now, the nice thing that we have going for us as amateur astronomers or amateur astrophotographers is that the front objectives, um, typically the dust, the, the dirt that's on there is like a little bit of water residue, sometimes dust, and sometimes things like uh, sap. And my recommendation now is about once a year, you probably wanna clean those if you've got it out under the skies very often, right? A couple times a week. Um, otherwise, just blowing it off with one of the dusters like I showed earlier will get you most of the cleaning that you need to do. And don't fret so much about, oh, there's maybe a little bit of, you know, maybe some like light sap from a tree or something. It probably won't show up in your images. Um, it will degrade and get worse over time, but don't worry about it too much. The filters and the sensor window, man, as we've seen in all of our images, um, and as you probably have seen yourself, any small fleck of dust on that will look super apparent. So typically what I've done, and I'm gonna do this a lot more uh, fastidiously now, is um, the nice thing about that is most of the time, the incursions, the dirt or whatever, it's just dust, right? Where those elements aren't exposed to trees that are nearby you or what have you. So if something does get on it, it might be a fingerprint, but most of the time, you know, as long as you're really careful, you're only grabbing things on the side, you don't have to worry about it. So it's gonna be dust. And the nice thing about that is, dust is really easy to get off of stuff. So um, for the filters and the sensor window, my recommendation is, every single time you remove or add, one, try and wear gloves if you can so that you don't get dust on any of those things, or I'm sorry, fingerprints on any of those things like the oils off your finger, and just dust them every single time with one of those um, you know, battery powered air blower machines. Don't use compressed air. And the reason that we don't use compressed air is sometimes if you hit it wrong, you can get some of the really cold gas to come out and that can damage the glass. So use a blower. Um, the bulb ones are, I think, what a lot of people use, but I like the powered ones because they move a lot more air and they're they're a lot better, I think, at getting stuff off. So for filters and sensor window, every time you add something or remove something to that system, every time you're opening it up, go ahead and just dust it really quick um, because it is mostly just dust. So those are my recommendations. Uh, like I said, I think I'm gonna do a different video for cleaning techniques. I know what I do. I'm not sure that I'm ready to share that as something that other people should do. So I'm trying to figure out how to experiment with that in a way that I can show everyone some results um, because my process probably isn't great. Now I haven't damaged anything, um, but I don't know. I don't wanna put something out there that might get other people's equipment hurt. So. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. This was a fun one. This was a bit of, an ex of a, a different experiment from what I'm usually used to of what I've been doing on this channel so far. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Again, it helps small channels like myself find the right audience if this was interesting to you. Um, 
clean your filters and your sensor window often. And by clean, I mean just dust them off because most of the time that's what's on there. And for that front lens element, the outside most element of your telescope, don't worry about it too much, which again, we've seen, I've seen on the reports online, but it was nice to actually see, well, what happens if it does get dirty? For Deep Sky Labs, I'm Francisco. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I think I'm about to hit about 250 subscribers. It's very exciting for me. Um, and clear skies.